Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. You know, uh, there are all sorts of people in the world that are very intelligent. They are very successful, perhaps in business. And um, they, it, it doesn't mean that all of their opinions are, are pure gold. And as far as whatever they may necessarily think on XRP, well, uh, there's a good chance that you listening to this know substantially more about XRP than some of the the uh, you know the wizards of smart out there. And what's what's making me speak along these lines? Well, here's a headline from Crypto Media Outlet U today. Kevin O'Leary mispronounces XRP on national TV. Says Bitcoin is only crypto that works. <laughs> it's funny. Like this guy. Like uh, nothing against him. Like I'm certainly not going to take away from the, the fact that. He's uh, incredibly successful, deservedly so, and um, I actually think that he makes a lot of sense on all sorts of stuff. I've seen him in enough interviews to, to just realize, okay, he, yeah. He, and and by the way, I always thought like seeing him on he's he's a you know he's a sh Shark Tank personality. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with the, the show Shark Tank. If not, just Google it. But in watching him on Shark Tank, I actually thought he always came across as a jerk. But the the, the more I watch him in interviews, I'm like, oh no, I don't know if it's just the way that he's framed or he's just really super blunt, but. Uh, I actually like him more the, the more I listen to him, but uh, even though that's true, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about here. <laughs> and I you know, and I'm not trying to be a jerk to him. I'm just sharing with you my humble opinion. So I'm going to run through this piece. But uh, before we go any further, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would please ever so delicately tap the like button, I would definitely appreciate the support. Uh, but uh, but don't smash it. If you smash the like button, you may break it, and you will be reliable liable for uh, repairs or replacements on the thing. I know, tough love on the Moon Lambo channel, but you break it, you buy it. That's the policy here. Also, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel if you love your mama, because tell you what, she loves you, and she wants you to be happy. And if you subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel, you will find a true happiness. I guarantee it. That's the moon level guaranteed, damn it. All right, into this piece now. Self-proclaimed Kryptonian Kevin O'Leary recently flaunted his cryptocurrency wallet that was created at the peak of the previous cryptocurrency craze on CNBC's Squawk Box. Back then, the Canadian businessman, who is widely known for hosting hit show Shark Tank, put $100 into Bitcoin and various altcoins whose names he does not recall. So good. While taking a look at his coins, he notably failed to properly pronounce the name of XRP, the fourth largest cryptocurrency that has lost close to 60% uh, uh, over the past two days. And here's a quote from Kevin O'Leary. At the time, all you could get was Ethereum XPR, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Stellar Lumens. There you go. XPR, not XRP. XPR. And the piece continues, considering that O'Leary's altcoin-rich portfolio has now shrunk nearly 50%. It made the reality TV star realize that Bitcoin is the only crypto that works. And mind you, like, XRP, it's like the, pretty much the only cryptocurrency that's used in the commercial production of anything, mind you, on-demand liquidity, and it doesn't work. Yeah. And so here, here's a quote, check this out. I put $100 to work here. This morning it's worth $52.77 because not all cryptocurrencies are the same, clearly. So Bitcoin is the only one that works, maybe. So this this is this is what I really wanted to strike at here, this idea. And you see you see this from all sorts of people that are maybe not that good at logic, or maybe they're just new to the world of crypto. And they're looking at short-term price action and drawing conclusions about long-term viability of cryptocurrencies when the truth is it's a bunch of uninformed people that are emotionally buying and selling. And so he looked at this and his natural response was the same as people that don't know what the hell they're talking about because frankly on this, he may be a brilliant guy and great at business, but here he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. All right, XPR. Uh, it's, it's you, you know, if you want to pick a time frame, you know, over the last several years, XRP has outperformed Bitcoin. What is that now? Evidence that uh, is it, uh, in and of itself that XRP is superior to Bitcoin and and it's going to be around forever. Well, I mean, I do think it's superior, but th that's not a good case to make to prove it. That, that's not a very strong case at all. And so looking at short term price action is purely silly, but this is the way people's brains work. And so I'm just aware of this. And, um, and, and really, I'll tell you what, being aware that this is how humans think and seeing that uh, humans emotionally buy and sell, just being aware of that 
has helped me to make sense of this damn crazy crypto world. And I do not behave like that. I do not emotionally buy and sell here. I'm going to hold all of my XPR. I'm going to hold all of my XPR. <laughs> oh, it's good times here. And then there's this piece from you today. And uh, Kevin O'Leary came up again in this piece for some reason. Uh, Mike Novogratz now views Bitcoin as institutional product. And you know what? Fair enough, because look, you know what's driving this most recent market rally is institutional purchases of, uh, of of Bitcoin. And I'm totally cool with that. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I'm all for it because you're talking about big money coming in, which I ultimately think will be good for XRP because XRP follows Bitcoin. And to be clear, I don't have a financial background. I am not offering financial advice. Do not buy or sell anything because anything I say are right. Okay, I just talk about this stuff because it's fun. and I'm an enthusiast. That's it, though. I'm not a professional. Anyway, uh, in an interview with CNBC Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novogratz has, has uh, firmly stated that Bitcoin is now an institutional product. Here's the quote. This is now an institutional product. That debate was, uh, was had and won 18 months ago, and the jury really voted six months ago. Now, he adds there are no longer career risks or uncertainty related to uh, due diligence when it comes to Bitcoin. And, and look, I think that's a totally legit point. It certainly was the case in the past for most of the time uh, you know, Bitcoin has existed that if you're in a crypto, uh, you know, and, and you're in the world of finance, you're going to ruin your reputation. But now it's it's kind of flipping. It's to the point where if, if you don't have some sort of exposure, then you're going to be looked at as a damn idiot stick. Hashtag idiot stick, right? And because uh, at this point, look, the more time passes, you, you can't just keep saying that it's all going to zero and it's a bubble and it doesn't make sense. At some point, you got to, if you're intellectually honest with yourself, you got to be like, okay, even if you believed that, uh, you got to ask yourself internally, like, what did I get wrong about this? Why is crypto still here? And so people are figuring that out. Uh, crypto is not going away. And so the more time passes, the more people will see jumping in and it's just going to be accepted. And so we can talk about um, and have, have uh, intellectual discussions on what cryptocurrencies should and likely will have long-term viability. That's always a fun discussion. But uh, let's just acknowledge to start that some will. Like, there will be winners in this space. It's not going to be a winner-takes-all. Maybe in certain categories there could be a winner-takes-all, but uh, there's not going to be one coin to rule them all. Absolutely not. And so you just have to kind of like wait, to the, let, let all this stuff uh, play out. And, uh, and again, it just, it just takes time. But uh, anyway, uh, he continues here. There's a little subheading. Mr. Wonderful is stuck in 2017. Of course, that's a reference to Kevin O'Leary. As reported by you today, Canadian multimillionaire and reality TV star Kevin O'Leary recently shed cold water on Bitcoin, claiming that institutions wouldn't touch Bitcoin due to fears of regulatory wrath. Uh, in fair enough, he's actually been at times. <laughs> so actually, it's funny. You think back to like 2013, I want to say, when it came up. Uh, he, he seemed to be more pro Bitcoin, and then you go back a few years ago that he wasn't again. Maybe it was two or three years ago, and uh, and now he's coming around again. So like I've seen him in recent interviews. Um, who interviewed him? Wasn't it, it might have been Anthony Pompliano? I think it was, and he seemed to really be coming around on uh, on the concept of cryptocurrencies. And he even talked, and I, I thought this was a, an interesting statement. But he he said, you know, if you if you have um, you know, a fund where you've maybe got the top seven cryptocurrencies in terms of market cap, uh, where it's all regulated and there is no more uncertainty. If you have the top seven in a fund, he says that he and he thinks other rich people around the planet would be way more likely. But he says with the, the way that things are at this point in time and the nascency of the asset class, he's not going to put much money on it at all, really. But he says that he would be happy to put, I can't remember if he said 5% or something like that. So he is coming around despite what was stated there in the article. And so Novogratz, however, asserts that Mr. Wonderful is out of the loop with the current state of the cryptocurrency market. And frankly, I just think that Novogratz is saying that because he hasn't seen the most recent uh, statements from uh, Kevin O'Leary, frankly. But uh, here's his quote from Novogratz. Everyone is on board that this is a macro asset. So I think Kevin is just playing on 2017 information. Peace continues. Bitcoin is indeed in a much better state than it was in 2017, which is why this year's rally has much stronger legs. No longer dismissed as a purely speculative play, it has become an attractive hedge against inflation for a slew of institutional investors. Yeah, and so that's it, obviously that's the the direction that everything's heading. Unquestionably true, but um, it, it, again, it's it, it, it. I don't know if you guys frequently think about this, but I, I actually do. I just I frequently remind myself that 
it is early days here. Like the, the asset class, I know 12 years old. I don't know if that sounds old to you, but it doesn't to me. You know, we haven't even had a new asset class in like 300 years or something stupid like that. It's been forever. This is the youngest asset class by a long shot. I mean, the fact, think about it. So I've been in, in the, the world of crypto for just over three years now, which means that I've been around for 25% of the time the asset class has existed. Like, that's a weird way to frame it. You know, <laughs> like, that's crazy, right? <laughs> um, and so it's in its nascency. We just need to see how things pan out. But uh, you know what? All good things in time. I will wrap it up there. So, uh, um, you know, again, I do want to say that I uh, hope you guys are, are doing well. I hope that you're, you're, you know, being really careful with your XPR investments, all that. And uh, yeah, I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next hot jam, to the moon, Lambo.